let's take a look at the new iPhone stolen device protection feature in iOS 17.3. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to macmost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So the most talked about new feature of iOS 17.3 is iPhone stolen device protection. And this is a special security switch that you could turn on and it gives you extra protection for a very specific type of iPhone theft. This is not just when somebody's stolen your iPhone. It's already very difficult for somebody to get anything from your iPhone if they've just stolen it. They don't have your passcode, so they can't get into it. But what if the person has stolen it and also has your passcode? The case where this may happen is if somebody's observed you in a public place, maybe they saw you enter your passcode or even used a camera to film you entering your passcode, and now they steal your iPhone and they do have the passcode. Now this situation has been overreported in the news and it's definitely happened, but the chances of happening to you are probably very slim. But this feature will provide extra protections in that case. And better still, even while it's providing extra protections, you may not notice any difference. It's not going to really inconvenience you in most situations. It does this in two ways. The first way is by asking for biometric ID. In other words, face ID or touch ID. So for instance, if you go to autofill a credit card in Safari, it's going to ask for Touch ID and Face ID. A passcode will not work. So somebody has the passcode, they won't be able to access that. Matter of fact, they can't access any of your passwords with just the passcode. They need Face ID and Touch ID, which they wouldn't have because they have taken your iPhone and they're gone. The second set of situations are more serious things like actually getting in and changing your Apple ID password and such. Those actually will set a one hour delay. So you have to use Face ID and Touch ID to start the process and then it's going to do a one hour timer and then you need to use Face ID and Touch ID again to actually complete the process. So even if somebody was able to trick you into using Face ID or Touch ID on your stolen iPhone and then they go away, in an hour from now they're not going to be able to enter in that second Face ID and Touch ID. Now the way it doesn't inconvenience you is your iPhone already keeps track of your significant locations. These are places like work and home, places that you usually are and your iPhone has identified those and if you're in one of these it's not going to add this extra layer of security. It's only if you're somewhere else. So a typical theft would involve the person taking the iPhone to another location and all the security stuff is going to go into place. You may see it as well if you're somewhere you're not usually are. That's when you might see that you need to use Face ID and Touch ID for some things when normally you don't need to or maybe changing an important setting requires a one hour delay. Now let's talk about the requirements. The requirements of course are having iOS 17.3 so upgrade if you already haven't. It's for the iPhone so I know there's some people saying is this available on the iPad. It's not. It's only for the iPhone. Now of course you've got to have your basic security measures already there or this really high level security measure doesn't make any sense. You've got to be using two factor authentication for your Apple ID and of course you need to have a passcode set on your iPhone. You need to be using Face ID or Touch ID on your iPhone as well. So you have to have that set up and you have to have Find My turned on. These are all really basic security things and if you're at all interested in iPhone stolen device protection chances are you already have all of these turned on. Another thing you need is you need to have enabled significant locations. You probably have. It's already by default. I'll show you where in a minute. So let's take a look at it here. Here I am on an iPhone that's just been upgraded to this. To turn this on you want to go into Settings and then in Settings you would think you would go to Security and Privacy but it's actually Face ID and Passcode. So you go in here and you enter your passcode and then you're going to see it if you scroll down there's Stolen Device Protection and you can tap here to turn it on. So that's all you needed to do. Now the other setting I was talking about, that is actually under Privacy and Security. You need to go into there to go into Location Services and under Location Services go all the way down to the bottom and go to System Services. And from there look for Significant Locations. Go into that and then here you should see a number of records. This is a demo iPhone I use for tutorials so it's set to zero but you'll probably see a number there and you'll have a map there where you can actually look at some of them. And this is where the iPhone knows what's home, what's work, what's school and all of that. So you need to have this feature turned on. Although I have heard reports that if you have this turned off you can still turn on iPhone stolen device protection. It just will work 
the same everywhere. It doesn't give you a pass if you're at home, for instance. Now, once you have it on, there are certain things that you can't do without using Face ID or Touch ID. The passcode by itself won't work. So, for instance, you can't access your passwords. That means you can't fill in passwords in Safari and other apps. You can't access them in the Settings app. You also can't use autofill for payments, so you can't autofill credit cards. That's all going to be locked if you don't do Face ID and Touch ID. You can't turn off lost mode on the phone. You can't use erase all content and settings. You can't apply for a new Apple card, for instance. Uh, you can't do Apple card virtual numbers. That gives you like a credit card number you can use to enter into a website. You can't view and do some actions with Apple Cash and savings accounts and wallet. And you can't use your iPhone to set up a new device. So these are things where you need to use Touch ID and Face ID in order for them to work. Unless, of course, you're in one of those significant locations in which it all just works like it did before. So while you're at home, you're not going to notice any difference with these. Now, the second level of this is a bunch of things that you not only need to use Face ID or Touch ID, but you need to do it twice the second time after there's been a one-hour timer. So, for instance, changing your Apple ID password, signing out of Apple ID, uh, updating the Apple ID account security settings, uh, add or removing uh, Face ID or Touch ID, changing your passcode, resetting your iPhone, turning off Find My, or turning off this very feature, iPhone stolen device protection. All of those things, if you're not at home, work, school, or wherever, if you try to do them, it's simply going to give you this timer and then you're going to have to wait. Let me show you, for example, I'm going to go back in to Face ID and Passcode and I'm going to try to turn this feature off. So there's stolen device protection. I'm going to turn it off and it's going to authenticate this one time. And then it's going to ask me if I want to start a security delay. And then you can see the time remaining. If I return to the screen, it's going to show me the time here, but it will also give me a notification when the hour has expired. And then at that point, I can go back in and authenticate again with Face ID and turn it off. And the same is true with all those other settings I just talked about. If you want to know more about this, here's Apple's page all about this feature. It's basically all the information I just told you, but any updates to how this work will probably appear here as well. Now, this isn't perfect security, of course. There are holes in it, but the whole idea is it makes it that much harder for somebody to steal your iPhone and get into your stuff. Typically, a thief would steal an iPhone and not bother to get your passcode, in which case they can't do much with your iPhone as long as you have the general security stuff like a passcode set. But if they did actually get your passcode and they steal it and they go away, now they're very limited as to what they could do with it. And you have all that much more chance to be able to go and use Find My on another device and lock your iPhone out so that they can't get to anything. So basically, it already was really difficult for thieves to get iPhones and then profit from that theft. Now with this, it's going to be even harder. I think this is a big point that a lot of the other posts are missing about this. It's basically herd immunity for iPhone theft. As it becomes less and less profitable to steal iPhones, somebody's going to be less likely to take anybody's iPhone regardless of whether or not you have this feature turned on. The risk becomes too much for the potential reward. You still need to practice general common sense. Make sure you don't put your iPhone in situations where it could easily be taken from you. Make sure when you enter your passcode that people aren't watching or use a stronger passcode like I do. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.